If you're an employed provider working for a hospital, network, or other medical group, you've likely never had to buy your own malpractice insurance before. But if you decide that you want to start moonlighting, doing some locums or contract work, or perhaps you want to explore going off on your own, now you've got to buy your own coverage and figure it out fast. In today's episode, we're going to give you a crash course on malpractice insurance and give you the four key things that you need to know so that you can buy your own insurance policy with confidence. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. We release a new episode for you every single week on YouTube and your favorite podcast streaming platform. So be sure to like and subscribe to stay connected. All right, let's jump in. When it comes to understanding medical malpractice insurance, there are four key things that you need to be set up for success. First and foremost, what type of malpractice policy should I get? There are two types of malpractice insurance in the market, claims made and occurrence. The easiest way for you to remember the difference between these two policy types is the name describes how the coverage triggers. If you have an occurrence policy, your malpractice coverage is triggered based on when the incident actually occurred. If you have a claims made policy, your malpractice coverage is triggered based on when the claim is made against you. So let's unpack it a little, starting with the occurrence policy. If you have an occurrence policy, the coverage triggers based on the date when the incident actually happened, regardless of when the claim is actually filed against the provider. So if a doctor treats a patient on January 1st, 2022, but the claim isn't filed for three years. The triggering date is the date that the incident actually occurred, which in this example would be January 1st, 2022. So as long as the doctor had insurance in place at the time of the incident, then he'll have coverage. Here's what this would look like in real life. A doctor will buy an occurrence policy day one and then renew that coverage every single year until the time comes when he needs to cancel. After he cancels the insurance, then he can actually just walk away. There's nothing else required at the end of an occurrence policy, meaning no tail insurance. He simply moves on. Those occurrence policies will stay active and in force with the insurance carrier that he bought them from. So if a claim is ever made against him for a patient that he treated during the years in which he was insured on the occurrence policy, those policies are available for him to access for coverage. Now let's look at the other type of insurance, which is claims made coverage. Claims made coverage triggers based on when the claim is made against the provider. As long as the incident occurred during the coverage period and an active policy is still in place, the doctor will be covered for the incident. So here's what that would look like. A doctor will buy a claims made policy day one and then renew the coverage every year until the time when he needs to cancel. But once he cancels the insurance, he's not done. A claims made policy is really two policies in one. You have to carry the insurance while you're actively practicing, and then after you cancel it, you have to get a second policy, and this is called tail insurance. Your tail starts at your cancellation date, and it extends your coverage into the future for any claims that may be made against you after you've already walked away from that policy. Why does a doctor need tail insurance? Because he must have an active insurance policy in place in order for him to be covered for a claim made against him, even if it's years down the road. So when a doctor buys tail, that means he has an active policy that will cover him into the future for any claims that may still be made against him for services that he rendered in the past. 
It can take a minute to really let this information sink in and get a good handle on these two policy options. So I would encourage you to go back and check out a few of our other episodes after this one to learn more. We've linked some really helpful ones for you here on the screen and also put them down in the show notes. So now that we've gotten the big one out of the way, let's take a look at the other key things that you need to know about malpractice insurance. Second on our list is how much coverage should I get? Each state has its own standard malpractice limit. So depending on where you practice, you'll want to be aware of the average coverage level in the area to determine if that's adequate for you. If you're working with a group, find out what limits your colleagues are carrying. It's generally recommended that all providers in a group carry the same or similar policy limits. Another consideration for determining proper malpractice policy limits is your geographic area, your specialty, and your scope of practice. Metropolitan areas are generally more litigious and often have higher claim frequency and severity, so be mindful of that when choosing your limits. Also consider your specialty and any unique or high-risk procedures that you may be doing. Are you doing a large number of surgical procedures, more than the average surgeon? Or are you doing a lot of mammography reads, maybe more than the average radiologist? These types of questions are helpful when discussing options for malpractice policy limits with your insurance agent. While it's certainly a risk to carry limits that are too low, it could also be a risk to carry limits that are too high. It's often speculated that doctors who carry very high malpractice limits are more of a target for plaintiff attorneys, as they're kind of seen as the deep pockets with more potential money at stake. This certainly is a risk, so it's important for providers to carry appropriate limits, not too high and not too low. The third thing that you need to know about malpractice insurance is that it's important for you to shop around before you buy your first policy. Because malpractice insurance is such an important and expensive purchase for you, you must do a thorough review of the market before you buy. When you're comparing policy options between carriers, you're going to want to look at a number of criteria in order to pick the best one. So here are some of the things that you'll want to know. First, what's the premium, both now and in the future? What policy types do they offer? What states do they write in? How long have they been in business and what's their financial rating? What's their trial win rate, their claim experience, and what defense firms do they use? Do they offer consent to settle? What kind of risk management and other value-added services do they offer? All of these factors can make a big difference when you're deciding which malpractice insurance carrier is best, so it's worth the time to review each option thoughtfully. If you need help comparing all of the information that you're looking at with these quote options, an agent will be your best resource. And that's our fourth thing you need to know. Work with a knowledgeable malpractice insurance agent. Buying medical malpractice insurance can be a time-consuming, frustrating process. There are many different companies to choose from, policy types to understand, and coverage nuances that can make it difficult to really know if you're getting the best coverage at the best price. An agent can help you navigate the carrier options and provide you with other feedback, such as information on which company is easiest to work with, which ones are good with their turnaround times, etc. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. We have some great episodes lined up for you in the next few weeks. I'm excited about next week's in particular, so make sure you stick around for that one. And please make sure you're subscribed to our show so that you don't miss an episode. If you found this information helpful today, could you also do me a favor and give us a like and leave a review? Your feedback and support really does help us to reach more people. And we're grateful for your clicks and your kind words. That's it for this episode of Malpractice Insights, where we're dedicated to helping you understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.